So once in five years, we can afford an election. Not every year, every year somewhere election going on, every state election has become like a national election. I think some law has to be there, there must be a period for election. All assembly elections one time, parliamentary elections another time, it must be done. People will protest because there are many political issues I know. Privately, we are slowly trying to transform many political leaders in the country. We have successfully worked with a few people, others are slowly coming in. The most significant thing right now in the nation is And you are making the point that there should in fact be fewer elections in this country because maybe that would keep politicians more focused uh, on issues that matter. I didn't say fewer, I said more concentrated. See, Not right, so spread out. Yes. See, right now because some state government collapsed here and there or whatever, in between, in between, you just see almost… you're in the news business, you are seeing all the… almost all the time you're talking about election. Hmm. In a democratic country, when you talk about election, you don't always talk sense, okay? You talk popularism. So once in five years, we can afford an election. Not every year, every year somewhere election going on, every state election has become like a national election. Mm. See, right now there's an election somewhere in other states, but it feels like there is election going on everywhere because you won't leave me. If an election is happening in Assam, you will beam it into my house. So I think election is happening right here. Yes. All the time this kind of populistic statements are being made, what needs to be actually done cannot be done. I think some law has to be there, there must be a period for election. Yes. In that time you allow some margins what people say and do, but otherwise there must be some real time work time. So, so reduce the number or the spread out? The spread should go, it should completely go if you ask me. If you want to all assembly elections one time, parliamentary elections another time, it must be done. People will protest because there are many political issues, I know. But political issues are always there. People's issues, the nation's issues, the nation moving forward issue is the biggest issue. That's the reason why we've elected people. Sadhguru, I, <clears throat> I actually entirely agree with you and Lok Sattva and I have been always articulating the need to strengthen national parties. The tragedy is they're their worst enemies. So we do require to transform politics. That's why I was so repeatedly in pleading. That I don't blame you at all. An I wouldn't like to join any national party because we know what's happening and the way it's conducted. So how but do we? But that is the reality of our nation. But unless we transform them, unless that's the reason why I'm pushing you today. Unless the pressure comes from the spiritual gurus, from the civil society, from media, that the need of the hour is not merely replacing one with the other, but actual transformation of the nature of politics and building a framework for the unity of India. I entirely agree with you. So I'm privately, there, there not I publicly, not… Oh, privately. Not announcing to people, oh, whatever it giving them that privacy. Privately, we are slowly trying to transform many political leaders in the country. We have successfully worked with a few people, others are slowly coming in. But it's still a long process, it's not something that will happen overnight. An India, a country like India cannot be ch turned around overnight. If we work as a generation of people, maybe we'll leave a little better country for the next generation. That's where we need to look at. The most significant thing right now in the nation is, people have come to a place where they're willing to give up their caste, creed, ideology, everything for economic well-being. This may be described as greed by certain people. I see it as a possibility. There is only one ethos, everybody wants to do economically well. This is an opportunity to transform the nation. When they're economically down, you ask them to leave their religion and come beyond that. You ask them to leave their caste and creed and come beyond that, they will not come because that net is a security belonging to a certain caste belonging to a certain religion, belonging to a certain community has been their security for centuries, for thousands of years. Suddenly you ask them to come out, they won't come. Only if you throw up a big opportunity and a dream out there, people will crawl out of those nets. 
risking their life. So economic opportunity is the most important thing right now. Personally, it leaves distaste in my mouth to go on talking and pitching for economic possibilities because that's not going to transform human life. But right now, if nation has to crawl out of the pit, social, economic and political pit it is in, right now I see the only solution is economic development should happen. It'll come at various costs will be there, there will be a price to pay for that. But we must pay the price, otherwise we'll stagnate where we are. Sadhguru, that practical wisdom actually is music to my ears. Unless we have such unrelenting focus on economic growth and rapid economic growth, I entirely agree how both political and social problems will only be exacerbated. I think we ha should give it an opportunity to the floor to raise, I'm sure, far more interesting questions. How do we find this balance, the balance between this base need and this high need of spirituality? Because I think that in the, we are in the middle and what we want is an ease in life in this democracy so that we can all become seekers and concentrate on seeking as opposed to concentrating on surviving. The question is for him, right? No, it's for you Sadhguru, the balance is about you. We are all imbalanced people. Now, if, uh, I will simplify this. How do I bring a balance between right now I am hungry, I am. Right now I am hungry, how to fill this and how to attain to the highest goal, whatever that is, mukti or liberation or how to fill my belly and how to meditate. How to make these two things happen? You are addressing it as if they are two separate things. Do not address it as two separate things. You are a human being. You are a human being who's come with both the needs. But when you are hungry, if I ask you to meditate, you are not going to meditate. Will you? And I will not ask you to meditate because I think when a man is hungry, asking him to meditate is vulgar. It's an obscenity to when somebody is hungry, you talk to him about mukti, I think it's obscene. I will not do such a thing. If he's hungry, we must see how first the food should happen. Then only we can talk about another dimension. So do not look at it as two separate things, but physical need is an urgent need. Meditation, you could postpone it to tomorrow. Dinner, you must have today, isn't it? So economics is the need right now because half the population has still not eaten properly yet. You can talk meditation only to those who have eaten well, not to those who have not eaten well. We don't do such things. That is why Isha has a spiritual aspect and a social aspect. I don't like to do the social thing. If the administration had taken care of all the social needs, I would like to do just the spiritual part. But if I do just the spiritual part, I will leave out half the population. So I am doing the social thing with them. So do not separate it. If you… your stomach becomes full, immediately the other need will naturally come up within you. I don't have to tell you, you meditate. You will start looking, what do I need to fulfill my life? Because this is the nature of a human being. If you came here as some other creature, stomach full, life settled. Once you come as a human being, stomach empty, only one problem. Stomach full, one hundred problems. So, once your stomach becomes full, you will seek other things. You don't have to be told, you will seek anyway. Then other things will come anyway. That's why we are talking so much about economics right now. I think there is a hint from Sadhguru that we should wind up because he's hungry. Um, who is next? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Who is next? Um, yes, this young man. In, in politics, you, you said you require a business outlook leaders, at that, that perhaps it means like instead of people who share hundred rupees, you want people to make hundred to thousand rupees and share five hundred rupees. That, that, that's what… No, I'm not talking about sharing. See, he said, he said, politicians have spent some five hundred crores something. I said, no, they have invested. So, but the problem is, it is a business, but it's an illegal business. There is no law monitoring it rigidly enough 
to make it a legal business. Now in United States of America, right now Barack Obama and Mitt Romney are going around the country raising millions of dollars for their election. But it's a legal business. If he takes one dollar more illegally, he'll go to prison. We just have to do that, isn't it? Right, Guru. Uh, coming to my question, it's like there's been uh, this bipolar elections. I went to a ca went to the campaign because you know motivated. You must arrive at the question quickly. Yeah, because not because I am hungry, because so many hands are going up. That there has to be a background formed for the question because otherwise it's difficult to understand. No, we are capable so, of understanding the context. The question, if I have to put in a nutshell, then how an intellectual and a person with a business outlook can stand for elections and win? This culture of economics has still not come. We are in still a culture of charity. We have to bring a culture of economics because you've chosen a market economy. See, this is not a simple decision to make. For the f uh, builders of this nation, they chose a socialistic economy because it was more endearing to think in terms of let's share, let's do things better. You know, it's not about you versus me, let us do this, but it did not work. As an idea, it's a great idea, but it's an idea that's failed because humanity is not ready for such a big idea. Right now, we have come to a much grosser idea, okay? Market economy is a gross idea, very crass way of existence, but it's working better than the very refined idea. I am interested in making it work because ideals on an empty stomach means nothing. I know four hundred million people in this country have not eaten one good meal in the last ten days probably. So when this is our condition, ideals are a taboo. I'm saying this to him. Ideals are a taboo, nobody ha can have the luxury of having ideals. We just have to do what's needed. After everybody has eaten, then we can talk what is our ideal, what is our philosophy, what is our ethic. First people have to eat because eating cannot be postponed to tomorrow. Philosophy can be postponed to tomorrow, meditation can be postponed to tomorrow, eating cannot be postponed to tomorrow, it has to happen now, isn't it? So for this, once we have chosen econ economic… our economic model is market economy, please strengthen the market and nothing else but the market. People tell me, what is this, you say you're a spiritual leader but you're charging for this, I said, I will charge. Somebody who comes who cannot pay, I will do something else, but I want you to understand, if you want something delivered, it costs. Whether you pay for it or somebody else pays for it, it costs. You gotten used to somebody else paying for it, that is why you don't know how to make use of anything that's offered to you. If you were paying for it, you would make use of it well, isn't it? Yes or no? Right now, rice is free, dal is free, television is free, gas is free. You think you will destroy the work… work culture of this nation completely. In Tamil Nadu today, so many things are free for… for essentially for election reasons and populistic democracy that we are doing right now. Yes, when somebody doesn't have anything, you give him something, it's great. But instead of giving something, even if it causes suffering, if you create opportunities where everybody could make money, and have the necessary power to buy it, it would be better. Because today, this started from Andhra Pradesh, that's why I'm telling you. Rice came at one rupee. A ten rupee rice, if you give it at one rupee, who is paying the nine rupees? Who's asking this question? I'm saying you have chosen a market economy, you cannot do this. It may sound cruel, but there are poor people. If the first thing is you are enjoying poverty, this is the biggest problem. Religious people enjoy poverty because they want somebody to serve and go to heaven. Now, businessman does not enjoy poverty, he wants everybody to have purchasing power because otherwise he cannot run his business <laughs>
we will see significant improvement in the quality of policy making, the nation's economic progress and even voter turnout if we implement the one nation one election rule. We cannot afford the noisy rhetorical distraction of frequent elections because once elections are announced, no work happens on ground except for campaigning. We cannot build a great nation in fits and starts. For Bharat to mature as a democracy and to build a long-term vision for the country, one nation one election is a must. Let's make it happen.